Let's go back to the phone lines. Talk to Kevin in St. Louis, Missouri. Kevin is listening on Sirius XM 131. Hi, Kevin. Hello, Hank. Um, I listen to your show whenever I can. I'm a truck driver, and uh, you have a marvelous show. I uh, really admire you, and I praise God for what you, for what you do. Thank you. Um, you said something some years ago. I was listening on the radio, and it pretty much brought me to tears. You said there's a willful ignorance in the body of Christ. I can remember exactly where I was at when I heard it, and uh, I have been encouraging Christians to dive into their word. Um, I, I try to make an attempt to read the Bible every year. This is my sixth year, praise God, for that. And I have a question. This year I've been reading the Bible chronologically. Uh, in First Chronicles 21 and 1, it says that Satan caused uh, David to take David to take the census against Israel. But when you get to Samuel 24 and 1, a Second Samuel 24 and 1, it said that the anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and He caused David uh, to take the census. Also, there's a part two to my question, but I think when you answer one, you'll answer both of them. In First Chronicles 21 and 25, it says that 600 pieces of gold was the payment for the threshing floor. But when you get to Second Samuel 24 and 24, it says that 50 pieces of silver was paid for the threshing floor. Um, why, why is that? I know the Bible doesn't contradict itself, but it seems to be conflicting. Yeah, I, I think there's two things you have to recognize here. The first is that when we say the Bible's the infallible repository for redemptive revelation, we're not making that claim for translations. Uh, there are scribal errors, there are translational errors in the Bible. What we are saying is through what's called the science of textual criticism, you can get back to the autograph and those kinds of errors... Uh, are, are, are then exposed and corrected in the newer translations. And, and, and typically what you'll find is a little note in the margin of the newer uh, translations that help elucidate that. But there's another issue going on here, and that's why I said two things. When you look at what's going on in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 24 and 1 Chronicles chapter 21, where one is emphasizing God inciting David and the other inciting the role of David, uh, you don't have a contradictory there, uh, a contradiction there. What you have is, at best, an antinomy. An antinomy meaning a tension in the text, in that both are true. Uh, God told David to take a census, and Satan incited David to take a census. And what you have in this passage is a demonstration that although Satan incited David, ultimately it was God who allowed Satan to carry out this provocation. And Satan's design was to destroy David. His design was to destroy the people of God. And yet it was God's plan to humble David, to teach his people a valuable lesson. Instead of trusting solely on God, David learned the lesson of trusting in his military might. I mean, you think about one of the most egregious sins in all the Scripture. It's not David having Bathsheba's husband Uriah killed on the battlefront. I mean, it's hard to get worse than that. It's not having sex with another man's wife, and then taking her to be his own, and then living in the face of God with impunity as though he had not sinned at all. In fact, Nathan the prophet had to come to him and give him a parable, and still he didn't get it, and then the bony finger of the prophet, you are that man. And what did David do? He repented in sackcloth and ashes. And if you want to see the ultimate contrition of David, you see it in Psalm 51, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. 
uh, if there's one psalm I could tell people to memorize, I would say that's that particular psalm. Why? Because I recite it before the Lord almost every single day. Grant to me a willing spirit. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. But here's the real point. The real point is that David took a census and that census was the most egregious perhaps of all his sins. Why? Because he now did the unthinkable. He started to trust in his military prowess and might. The number of his fighting men to prevail in battle as opposed to the Lord. You know, Psalm said there's no wisdom, there's no understanding, there's no counsel against the Lord, no horse is prepared for the day of battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. David said, no, it's a function of how many men, how much armament I have, that's how I win the battle. And God once again came to David and this time, David Seer spoke for God and gave David three options, none of which uh, were particularly wonderful either for David or for the nation that he was king of.